the learning goal for this video will be I can draw uh, position and velocity graphs given an acceleration graph or vice versa. So we're starting with an acceleration graph and we're going how do we draw the velocity graph and from there how do we draw the, the position graph. So, so we're going to ask ourselves what does the slope tell us um, for a position time graph. So if we look at two points on a position time graph we can say well there's a change in position will be from one point to the other point and that occurs over a certain period of time. So the slope is always my rise over my run. So in this case my rise is my change in position. My run is my change in time. So that just tells us what our velocity is. Similarly for velocity time graphs, if I look at two points on a velocity time graph, I can say, well, I started with a zero velocity, and now I have some velocity, so that tells me my change in velocity on my y-axis, and my x-axis tells me my change in time. Slope is, again, rise over run, and that would be my change in velocity over my change in time, also known as the acceleration. So here's a question where we have to draw the position, velocity, and acceleration graphs for a car moving forward in the positive direction at a constant speed. So for my position time graph, let me just draw this. Here's the velocity time graph and acceleration time graph. So position, meters, time seconds, meters per second meters per second squared second. Constant speed would be a straight line for my velocity, horizontal line. I'm not changing my velocity. For position graph, my slope would be constant, right? To get from my position to velocity, I look at slope. That's not changing. My acceleration, you ask yourself, well, what's the slope of this line? Again, Slope is zero for this case, so I have no acceleration. That makes sense. I'm not changing my, my velocity in any way. So now let's explore what does area tell us. So for acceleration time graph, let's assume we have uh, a straight line across. We've got constant acceleration. If I look at my area, I've got on my y-axis acceleration, or meters per second squared. My x-axis, I have time. So my area here, well, this is a rectangle, so it's got length, which is, we'll call this my length. And here's my width. So I've got acceleration and on my x-axis, I have time. Now if I'm looking at just my units, I have meters per second squared on my y-axis, my x-axis I have seconds. So we can cancel out that seconds with one of these seconds and it gives you just back meters per second. So meters per second is a velocity. So the key here is my area for an acceleration versus time graph can tell me my and it actually tells you your change in velocity. Not necessarily your velocity, but that's a, a very big key, is that this is the change in velocity. Okay, we're going to ignore the calculations just for a second. Now, let's say I had an acceleration, and Let's, let's use numbers for this. It might be a little bit easier. I'm going to go 3 meters per second squared for 4 seconds. My change in velocity is 3 meters per second squared times 4 seconds. And that gives me 12 meters per second. So if I started at rest, 
That means four seconds later, I'd be moving at 12 meters per second. If I started with, if my initial velocity was 10 meters per second, my velocity would change by 12, so I'd then be going 22 for the 10 plus the 12. So, I changed my velocity by 12 meters per second. So let's assume we started from rest. So starting from rest, my velocity graph, I would start at zero. Then, after one, two, three, four seconds, I know I'm moving 12 meters per second. So let's go 3, 6, 9, 12. So I'm going to draw roughly my point right there. So after 4 seconds, I'm moving 12 meters per second. Now how do I connect these two points? Well, I had constant acceleration, so I know my slope is going to be a straight line. If I have constant, if I want to go from velocity to acceleration, I look at my slope. So in this case, I need to have a straight line slope because my acceleration is constant. So my area for this, if I'm looking at the area, well, it's a triangle, so my area is going to be one half times the base times the height. So we'll call this my base and this my height. So base in this scenario is my time and my height is my change in velocity. If I'm just looking at units, one half does not have units. Time has units of seconds. Velocity has units of meters per second. So this gives me back units of meters. So the area of a velocity graph tells me position. It's written right here. Now again, this one half right here, don't be fooled, this is only for triangles. In general, the area um, of your velocity time graph just tells you your position. So after two seconds, so we're going to change this to four seconds. After four seconds, let's look how far our object has moved. So it has moved, which is equal to one half times my my height is going to be 12 meters per second. Then I'm going to have 4 seconds. That's going to be 12, 24 meters. So this is my change in position is 24 meters. So if I wanted to, to, to graph that, here's my 4, 3, 6, 9, 12. Here's my velocity graph. My position graph. I know after 4 seconds, I've gone 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So about 20. After 4 seconds, I am at 24 meters. roughly this point. I started, we're going to assume we start at the origin, or start at uh, our zero location, and notice how my velocity is increasing, so my slope of this graph also needs to be increasing. So, the key for this video is if I'm going from position to velocity, we want to take the slope. And again, if I'm going from velocity to acceleration, I take the slope. 
I'm going from acceleration of, to velocity, I take the area. If I'm going from velocity to position, I take the area. So really this is the big key of the video. So hopefully now you can draw position and velocity time graphs given an acceleration graph um, or vice versa.